All right, guys, this is my absolute favorite breathing drill that I give everyone. You're gonna lie down on your back with your feet flat on the floor, one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly. Now, most of the time when people breathe in, they breathe in like this. And this means you essentially have zero intra-abdominal pressure. Alternatively, a lot of people know how to breathe into their belly diaphragmatically and push it out like this. What I wanna show you is how to breathe into both chest and belly, focusing on the low ribs so they expand in unison. And what we're looking for here is a feeling of pressurization through the belly, which remains through the whole breath, like the quality of a water balloon or a cooked pudding. This is a collapsed pudding. This is too full. What we want is just this nice sponginess and we wanna maintain that all the way in and all the way to the end of the exhale as well. So make sure that as you finish that exhale, you don't deflate like this. Now, while you're learning, you're likely to end up doing it a bit like this. As you figure out how to control the pressurization of your diaphragm and your lungs against your viscera. But as you get better, you're gonna learn how to move them together. And you'll find that the easiest way to do this is not by watching with your head, but by taking the spotlight of your awareness down here into the belly and into the hands to feel them moving together. By managing intra-abdominal pressure, you're creating a wrapped airbag of stability around your spine, which is then contained with the abdominal wall. So one of the terms we use to talk about this is breathing behind the wall because the air is inflating you like a balloon, but you have this muscular armor or wrap around it, which forms the wall. Most people just have the wall. They rely on their core musculature and on bracing too heavily. And that's because their breathing mechanics, AKA their rib cage and pelvic alignment and their diaphragmatic breaths aren't efficient. If you can learn to support yourself using this deeper layer of your body, then you'll find you don't need as much muscular tension, not only in the abdomen, but also in the limbs. Because when you're feeling tight in your limbs, it's usually a sign that your body doesn't feel centered and stable closest to the core or the midline. And the core or the midline, the spine, the axis of your being is where all movement should emanate from. Now, the reason we practice on our backs on the floor and not standing or seated is because when we give you the stability of the ground and the feedback of that touch, it helps your nervous system to focus on the subtleties of breathing because you don't have to balance, you don't have to worry about staying stable. I want you to practice this breathing technique on your back at first, and once you feel more confident, you can take it into varied positions, like the quadrupedal position, or like crawling, or even something like a side plank where you're feeling tensions on one side of the body, but still attempting to keep that sense of your midline alignment and breathing behind the wall. And what you'll notice is wherever you create more muscular tension in that wall, breath or pressure or your organs are gonna to wanna to go the other way towards expansion. So here's where things get really cool. Let's say you've got a compressed lower back. If we want this to expand and lengthen, we need to create some compression or tension on the opposite side. We do this by creating what's called a zone of apposition. The zone of apposition is the way your rib cage sits on top of your pelvis. Now, if you spill your rib cage forward and flare your ribs, you're opening up the lid on that canister. If you create a nice zone of apposition by dropping your sternum down and back and shortening the distance between your sternum and your sit bones, then when you breathe in, you've created a container which sends pressure backward to the sides and then ultimately upward and downward to decompress your spine. So once again, I'm gonna shift from flared ribs to sternum down and back towards the sit bones. From here, I'm going to exhale powerfully to recruit my obliques and feel the flushness of my rib cage and my abdomen. And then I'm gonna breathe in, keeping the position the same, directing the air towards my back. Now you are gonna feel some pressure in there. You're gonna feel like it's harder to breathe, but that pressure is the stability that's gonna help you when you're lifting 
when you're creating powerful rotation and also when you're walking. Because if this pressurized canister that you've created in here is like one of those thin inflatable sausage balloons, when you twist that, it wants to return to straight, which means that if we have intra-abdominal pressure lightly while we're walking and then we rotate, instead of having to use muscular effort to move our arms and our torso, we're simply using the elasticity of the arm swing to twist this pressurized canister, which then wants to bring us back the other way. So breathing and spinal rib cage pelvic position can help you move more effortlessly and decompress your spinal muscles and your joints so that you feel better in your body. So once you've understood the floor version, you can take the knees up off the floor and you can reach beyond the knees with the palms facing the ceiling. From here, tuck your chin. From here, keep that same flushness of the breath, but because of the front line tension, you're gonna notice that the breath travels back and to the lateral ribs. This is good, go with it. This is what's known as back breathing. Because most of us have no trouble sticking our belly out and dumping into our lower back, but what we need to cultivate is this ability to drop the front ribs down and exhale powerfully using the internal obliques. The internal obliques are the muscles which keep this like this. Once you've built capacity in this position and you're starting to free up that breathing into your back and lateral ribs, you'll be improving your thoracic rotation because your rib cage will be better at changing shape which means you can start to explore keeping that same cueing of flush ribs with belly, breathing as one unit, and start to twist a little bit. I'm not just letting my knees collapse to one side, I'm keeping them neutral and actively rotating my pelvis while maintaining breath control throughout. And I go very slow here, like 30 seconds to one minute to go down and same to come up. And if at any point I lose that sense of connectedness, if I feel like it's all abdominal wall and tension, and there's not enough of a balloon of breath pressure behind that, then I'm just gonna pause or come back a little bit and see if I can find it again before eventually going lower. Most people notice that when they try to come up, it feels more challenging and it feels like they're just using their muscles, their obliques. I want you to be mindful of keeping the sternum down towards the floor, and I want you to fill out that belly a little bit more if you're feeling a loss of intra-abdominal pressure. Then you can inhale and like that twisted sausage balloon, you'll start to come back to upright. So the movements I've just shown you have single-handedly fixed more backs than any other movement that I could possibly show. By learning to stack the rib cage and the pelvis and managing the pressure dynamics within that, you can support your body without needing excessive bracing or muscular tension or even fancy exercises. And what I love most about freeing up and healing the body using the breath is that you're already breathing all day. Sure, you can dedicate your time during sessions, but equally it can be practiced while walking, while sitting down having a coffee with a friend, or while lying in bed. If you're doing an activity that demands a lot of force, a lot of rotation, a lot of dynamic movement, then you can breathe more powerfully using more of a muscular wall around that balloon. And if you're just relaxing and down-regulating before bed, or just enjoying that cup of tea, then move towards the softer end of the spectrum where your muscular wall is relaxing and it's just that feeling of the gentle balloon of the breath moving. I hope this has helped guys. Give it a go and let me know how you find it.